Tonight, City West Hotel plays host to the most glittering event in the business calendar. 24 nominees and their family and friends have gathered for the 2008 Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. And what a year it's been. You know, when the environment is as tough as it is, and it is a very uh, tough environment, uh, I think it's actually even more important to celebrate, and particularly to celebrate good businesses that are working hard to thrive and to grow in a very difficult environment. The future for Ireland is in entrepreneurial endeavours, OK? And it's organisations like this and it's events like this that will make that difference. Those people behind me, those women and those men, who actually go out there, take risks, Go places where a lot of us have not gone before. That's the future of Ireland. They're going to make it happen. They're going to create employment. They're going to go and develop companies. And they're going to keep Ireland on the world map. We're a small country, but by good God, we punch high. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2008 Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Your host is David McWilliams. I feel like the Queen doing that, bowing to people I've never known and waving to people I've never known. Listen, it's lovely to have you all here, and I know everybody came here from all over the country and further afield in a horrible, brutal night, so thank you all very much indeed. Now, we all know that today Ireland is facing the most critical economic challenge in a generation, but tonight we're going to focus on the future. We're about to meet 24 outstanding entrepreneurs and within the next hour, we're going to anoint just one as the 2008 Entrepreneur of the Year. We're also going to be awarding a special jury prize for entrepreneurial excellence well outside traditional business. Now, amongst our nominees for this particular award is an explorer who has scaled the heights, that's adventurer Pat Falvey. We're also going to meet a man who has taken Irish fashion to the catwalks of the world, designer John Russia and an extraordinary group who have converted rich potential on the field into concrete gains off it. That's the all-conquering monster team. <laughs> now, now, handing on, you can always trust the monster men. Anyway, now handing out the gongs tonight these, I suppose you can call them the Oscars of Irish business, will be both the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment, Antonishta Mary Coughlin, and Paul Smith, Managing Partner of Ernst & Young. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, with respect to the economy, the most crucial thing to have is perspective and the ability to stand back from the crisis. Now, I realize that this is very difficult when bad news is mounting day after day. But history tells us that all financial crises pass. They all blow over. So the most important thing is not to panic. Ireland needs calm heads, strong ambition, and visionary people who can see beyond this present crisis and turn adversity into opportunity. Across Europe, markets had another terrible day as the frenzy of share selling continued. There are no guarantees about the global crisis swirling around us all still. And something is seriously wrong. It just shows you how far the housing market got out of kilter. All income earners are expected to have considerably less in their pay packets next year following the toughest budget seen in decades. In our grave new world, Irish business will find it hugely challenging to reinvent and reinvigorate. 
So in these times of turbulence, will entrepreneurs become less relevant? Or worse still, an endangered species? I think entrepreneurs are now needed more than ever uh, in, a, in a tough and a down economy. I think entrepreneurs can make the difference, especially for Ireland. The economy today is in a much more difficult position than it was even last year or five years ago. But even if our political leaders uh, come up with solutions and make our, our, our economy stronger, if entrepreneurs are not there to take advantage of, uh, of those steps that our politicians take, it'll be all for nothing. Uh, it'll be wasted. We can educate as many PhDs in maths as we like. We can educate uh, people through universities. We can build infrastructure. But if there are no business people there willing to take the risks, willing to build businesses, then that will be for nothing. It will be wasted. The finalists in this year's Entrepreneur of the Year programme are all people who relish a challenge. Their capacity to meet adversity head-on to treat failure as merely the postponement of success offers a blueprint for others to follow suit. The compunction to start a new business in good times is actually not as strong as it is in tough times. People do tend to get the opportunity in tough times if businesses are rationalising or if they've got ideas that they really want to kick off. Failure uh, defeats losers and inspires winners and the entrepreneurs see in downturns opportunities. It's a tough climate, but entrepreneurs aren't warriors. They're action-orientated. They can make things happen. They can look to new markets, to new products, and that's the joy of being an entrepreneur. You're in control. A lot of the finalists this year have been through downturns before. A lot of the people here are feeling very optimistic about uh, the future for the Irish economy and the future for their own businesses. There are opportunities, and the people who are on the shortlist are the sort of people who will take uh, advantage of those opportunities. I think it is critically important that we nurture our entrepreneurs, we help them where we can, and I think importantly, and as part of the programme, is to actually celebrate uh, entrepreneurship and to use these people as role models uh, to try and ignite the, that level of, of spirit of entrepreneurship within other people that may be considering setting up their own business. Enterprise, self-belief and ability to get out there into the world and find and create business is the silver bullet that's going to take our economy forward. So that's, so that's the background noise. So if the home market is going to be weak for some time, Irish business has got to look abroad for opportunities. And what better place, therefore, to kick off this year's awards than with the international category? Let's go out and meet the first four entrepreneurs who are making it on the international stage. Brendan O'Regan Software is the brain in all kinds of manufacturing processes, from Zenith Technologies Cork HQ, east to Singapore, or west to North Carolina. Zenith are spreading the word. We don't take it too seriously. We have a bit of a laugh, and there's a humorous side to all this as well, where people deal with people at the end of the day, and the, the, the human content is very important, you know. I'm very proud we, we can stand out in, in a global marketplace as uh, people from a relatively small island with not a huge technology base. You know, we've, we've had that advantage of going straight from agriculture into high tech and skipping the kind of industrialization in between that the other countries went through. I think that brings a self-sufficiency as well in the nature of the people. You know, when you send, I send engineers all over the world and I could be, I've never been disappointed with what they've managed to achieve. They get stuck into it and they don't upset anybody. That's an Irish trait, I guess. H&K make more than 7,000 individual items for commercial kitchens. Headquartered in Dublin, much of David Bobbitt's equipment ends up in the US, where the kings of the quick service industry are to be found. I think that you've got to have a culture, and it really is part of our culture that you're only as good as your last restaurant. In any business, I think there's a lot of things. There's controllable and non-controllable. And I think in business, you've just got to manage the issues that you can control. And you've got to focus your resources and, and, and work with the people to go and, and, and get the best result from any situation. A guy knocks down his drive, he's still got to play the hole as well as he can do. You've got to just take the knocks, get on with it uh, and focus and, and, and move forward. Danny Moore grew up on the shores of Loch Ney, but his career path brought him to New York and back again. Now the financial information that his software provides can make that same trip in a microsecond. I don't see starting a business as a blue sky thing where you lie on the beach one day and have a big idea and go and start a business. Get into a good business that's been successful, learn how it works and spin out and start up. In the global market, if you can come up with you know, projects where you can sell a product or a service to 
a thousand people or a million or a billion, you know, you can grow a huge business for your effort. Whereas there's a lot of businesses that are really quite limited and it doesn't matter how good you are, how hard you work, you know, the reward is going to be finite. It's one of the challenges that the economy faces. I never had a sense of being an entrepreneur, to be honest. I just did what I did. So I, I guess I've obviously been up to mischief since a very young age. Don Lorian has a 21st century company with a 21st century product. EcoSEM's environmentally friendly cement is providing the foundations for the carbon neutral buildings of the future. I think an entrepreneur has to show innovation, speed of action and determination. It's rare that an entrepreneur has other advantages. He rarely has more people to work for him than his competitors have. He rarely has more money to spend than his competitors have. So he has to make use of what he can do. Innovate, change, move quickly and uh, show determination when you come up against problems. You want to win but there are different ways of winning. We have 24 candidates and mixing with them and the stimulation that, that gives is going to mean that come what may on, on finals night uh, I'm going to be sitting there with a big smile on my face. Don Lorraine there. And we'll be finding out in just a few minutes whether that big smile is going to reveal itself as a broad, triumphalist grin. But in the meantime, let's meet the next four contenders. Xavier McAuliffe began film processing outfit Spectra in the 70s. Now Spectra is involved in construction, security and the luxury hotels and spa business. Innovator died, they say. I just love moving on to something different. No matter where it is in the, in the world, the world to me is very small. I mean, I'm in South Africa every six weeks, and now I'm in Panama every six weeks. I just got a buzz from building hotels and running them for a while and then handing it over and then just moving on to the next project. A lot of people go out there to try and make a quick book. I don't believe in a quick book. It takes, it takes years and years and years. I've been in business a long time. I've never made a, a quick book. If your essential computer equipment is no longer in production, Sean Keenan might be able to help. From nearly new demo models to brand new replacements, Multis can refurbish and remanufacture a product to suit. In the early days, it was very much a start-up, a small group of people. Your objectives were somewhat, if you like, tamer than, than, than where we are today. So the challenges are very, very different along the way. It's a learning curve each and every day uh, that you go uh, into the office. At the end of the day, it's about the collective minds, the collective input, collective wisdom from the management team and indeed all of the individuals and all of the experts that you have uh, throughout the different levels within the company. Lots of good minds out there. You need to tap into that rather than uh, just, just look at your own ideas and be driven by your own ideas along the way. When all about them were throwing in the towel, CNF and Athen Rye expanded the fight. John Flaherty set up factories in the Czech Republic, the Philippines and China. And the apprentice toolmaker has become the prefabricating master. How did I feel to be nominated? Hopefully, it will send a message to manufacturing. When you lose a job to globalisation, uh, the opportunity is there for you to take, so go chase it. Well, what really happened in Ireland was the multinationals came in and bought up the indigenous metal companies. I was offered big money twice, and I didn't sell. I'm not in it for the book. I never was. I have a love for manufacturing. When I want something, I go for it. When I get something, I keep it. Connor Foley works according to the law of averages. Connor heads up spread betting provider World Spreads. With them, anyone can trade shares, commodities or global markets online and commission-free. Risk management is something that, uh, that I think is almost second nature to, uh, to entrepreneurs and the ability to get a decent night's sleep even when you know you're going to have problems to address in the morning. That's definitely an entrepreneurial challenge. We started at a time when the dot-com bubble had literally just burst. As a result of that, to achieve success at that time was something we're all at World Spreads particularly proud of. The competitive nature in all of us and in a very strong field this year means that we all want to win. Having said that, I'll certainly shake the hand of the, uh, of the man or woman that wins begrudgingly. Begrudgingly or not, Conor Foley is sitting over there at table 21. He's apparently taking spread bets if you have the stomach and Irish bank shares at the moment. So, all head over. Please welcome onto the stage to announce the winner 
of this, the first category, the international category, and the Kelly of Ernst Young. Ireland's most talented entrepreneurs have built remarkable businesses at home and abroad. On the global stage, they have competed fearlessly and won. Uh, the winner of the 2008 Ernst & Young International Entrepreneur of the Year is Johnny Flaherty of CNF Group. When global manufacturing moved east in the late 1990s, John Flaherty refused to allow his Irish enterprise sleepwalk its way into extinction. For proving that the West is indeed awake, he is the 2008 International Entrepreneur of the Year. Good evening, everybody. I honestly can't believe this is happening. I cannot believe it. Uh, I'm honored to accept this award. Uh, I need to thank uh, all my staff, my family, and everybody, and especially Ernest and Young, who put up these awards. I'd like to also give a special mention to the people that go overseas for me and expand our companies. And there's one last person I want to thank the late Tom Kennedy, who has done more for manufacturing in Ireland. Uh, he worked for Enterprise Ireland, and he's been a true friend of our company. Thank you. It's time now for our special award. This recognizes that entrepreneurial spirit is not confined to the profit and loss account. And this is a particularly apt moment to acclaim our first nominee, because next Friday sees the anniversary of the day when the All Blacks traveled to Thoman Park. Munster are still creating history. They stand supreme as champions of Europe on the pitch. But tonight, we want to pay tribute to Munster's work off the pitch. Thomond Park is haunted by the ghosts of glory days, where the feats of the Munster men echo still. After a 40 million euro renovation this summer, it is a tangible monument to the players' achievements, and that entrepreneurial vision which built Thomond has ensured heart-stopping moments like these. Ireland kind of stumbled into the professional era, reluctantly. The IRFU were drag kicking and screaming. And in terms of our club setup, Ireland weren't set up for professional rugby at all. There was 48 clubs. But by a quirk of fate, we had these things called the Four Provinces, which were just a natural place to go when the Heineken Cup started off. Even the year before me, I heard of training sessions that were done at night time, but there was no floodlights, so, you know, the coaches would have had the, the headlights shining on the pitch, you know, and uh, we, we've come a long way since then. Unlike most of the European competitors, Munster have no millionaire benefactor. A professional staff runs the professional game, the money earned going back into the club. In a hugely competitive environment, Munster is a voluntary organisation with entrepreneurial flair, both on and off the field. The team is the business, really, and the business is built around the team, but the team is bigger than just what you see on the field. The team is the development players, it's the extended squad, it's the academy, and it's the place where all of them come up through the... the the schools and youth system in the province so that's what I see as the team and I see it as the people off the field as well as the people on it. Our focus as players is to win trophies, developing the, the, the game here for the future and, and building this new stadium is, is definitely part of that and, and putting ourselves up there as a big team and a big force in Europe. 
Thoman Park now is a legacy to the players that have worn that jersey, that have passed on from player to player. What they've achieved on the pitch and off the pitch, they've earned. They've earned everything.